I'm being interviewed. I'm the first person in all of Ontario to get on the cross. In general terms, uh, scoliosis is a curvature of the spine in the coronal or the, or the front plane. So if you were to look at the spine, normally most people's spine from the front or if you were to look at their spine from the back is generally straight. Patients with scoliosis have a curvature in their spine, meaning that instead of their spine being straight, they usually have a curve in the thoracic spine that goes one way and often a secondary curve in the lumbar spine or upper thoracic spine that goes the other way. Most patients with scoliosis likely don't need treatment, uh, but there is a subset of patients who have a very large curve, and that curve can be progressive over time, and uh, if it gets big enough, then it can cause either localized pain, or in some instances, even uh, compromise of uh, um, organs that, that live inside your chest, such as your heart and lungs. In the case of early onset scoliosis, which is a fairly rare condition, uh, what happens is that uh, the child develops the curvature before their peak growth, uh, meaning that as they continue to grow, particularly when they hit their peak growth rates, the curve itself tends to progress, and then it can progress to quite a large size. So for instance, you know, a, a seven or eight year old child who already has a 50 degree curve um, can, by the time they're done growing, end up with a 90 degree or greater curve, which has substantial effect on their daily activities, uh, the overall balance, the overall health, and, and um, um, daily life. So uh, Emma is the, is the first patient in Ontario to have had a, this particular device implanted. Generally speaking, when we treat scoliosis, the majority of our patients are already done growing. And so we can surgically straighten their spine uh, and balance it and keep it in that position. But that requires fusing the spine, which means that the patient can no longer grow this becomes a major problem if the child's very young. So if they're only seven or eight years old and they have lots of growth left, you don't want to inhibit that growth, you don't want to stop that growth, but you also don't want to let the, the curvature get any bigger. And so traditionally what we would do is we'd use um, a construct or a type of instrumentation that would grow with the patient. The problem was that the growth wasn't automatic and we often had to bring the patient back to the operating room for repeated procedure to manually make this grow. The magic rod is a very nice device in that it allows for the growth to happen without having to take the patient back to the operating room. So all I have to do is to see them back in my clinic as I normally would anyways for routine follow-ups and use an external control module in order to get the rod to grow, um, which means that it's completely non-invasive, it's painless and uh, it's uh, easy to do with uh, very little risks. Bad at swimming, but now I can swim like an angel. <laughs>